This is how you want to wire up your breadboard to the Raspberry Pi. Just follow the schematic of the electronic circuit exactly as it appears. Attention to detail is very important here. I link to the schematic on my README file in GitHub repository under a useful reference material. Notice how on the Pi we're using sequential physical pins 2, 6, 8, 10, and 12. It's very important to use a common ground as you can see here. This was by far the best schematic diagram I found for wiring everything up. Most of the other wiring instructions were all text-based and not easy to follow at all. Let's go over the instruction packet. <clears throat> so the um, the um, Dynamixel motors can be controlled with instruction packets, and they also send back status packets. So that's the primary mode of communication with the motors. In um, here, we're going to just focus on the instruction packet because that's primarily what we'll use in all the code. So as you can see here it starts with a header 1, header 2. These are hex numbers. FF is um, 255 decimal. One of the best videos I've seen on hex number conversions is uh, this one right here on YouTube and uh, just go to understanding binary hexadecimal decimal base 10 and more this guy does a really excellent job covering uh, hex number conversion so um, uh, the FF and FF just tells the Dynamixel motor that something is coming so expect something you know to arrive the ID is a unique um, number for each Dynamixel motor you never want to have the same ID on the bus uh, you never want to have uh, more than one motor with the same ID on the bus and um, because you'll get all kinds of weird messages and weird performance and stuff like that. The length, this is going to be the number of parameters plus two. So in this example we have parameter one, let's say this is parameter two, okay? So the length would be four in this case. So if we had three parameters obviously you know it would just increase. Uh, the instruction is um, is something that you pull off a table. These are all the possible instructions you can have. You can have a read, you can have write, and you'll want to become familiar with this. And I have links to all these um, all these websites and all these web pages in the GitHub README. So, for example, you see here as a three to write. You use this often, very, very often. I would say this is probably one of the most popular ones. So that's where you would pull the um, the hex code for the instruction. And then you have parameter one, parameter as many parameters as you like here. And then finally you have the checksum. And I'm going to show you how to calculate the checksum. So this is one of the files in the GitHub repository. And this particular file will um, will change the ID, the default ID of every motor. So you want to connect one motor at a time to the Raspberry Pi. The uh, IDs all default 
to 1. If you look at the um, control table, you'll see right here that the initial value is 1. These are all hex numbers, the addresses. Actually, I'm sorry. Uh, these, are, these are decimal, but um, you'll need to convert them to hex before you can use them. So hex is uh, base 16, so you go, you know, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 8, 9 10. At 10, it becomes A, 11 becomes B, 12 becomes C. So when you look at the video on the YouTube video that I showed you, that'll explain everything. So the ID defaults to 1. You can see it's a read-write, which means you can use a status packet to read it or an, or an instruction packet to write to it. So this is, um, this is the line that you'll be configuring. All the other stuff will not really change. The only thing that will change is this information here. So you want to hook up the motor, you're the servo. It'll be default ID 1. I mean, um, the ID will be 1. So um, if you only have one motor, then there won't be any conflict, right? If you had two motors with ID1, then it, there would be a conflict. You wouldn't want to do that. Then um, after the ID, you have the length. Remember that the length is the number of parameters plus two. In this case, this is the checksum right here. Before the checksum are usually the parameters. So you'll have one parameter, two parameters, plus two is four. That's why you would have four there. Three is the instruction to write. Going back to our instruction table, you can see here that three is right. Anytime you see zero x, in front of a number that denotes a hex number, not a decimal number. So this three means write to the motor's table. This three here, you would want to look at the control table to see what number that corresponds to. So if we look at the control table, you'll see that number corresponds to the ID And you want to write a new number to the ID, which in this case is 2. But um, this can be anything from 0 to 254. And then finally you have the checksum. So in order to calculate the checksum, you have to add these guys right here. If they are less than 255 decimal, then you would just subtract it from FF. If it's over 254 decimal, then you have to do a little bit more um, computation. 
But the easiest way I found to um, calculate this is by using a checksum calculator. I have a checksum calculator here. So let's grab these numbers here, put them into the checksum calculator, do a calculation. The result is F3. This is always going to be one more. So you just want to reduce that by one. So it would be F2. And as you can see, that corresponds with what we already have here, F2. So if you, if you were to change the ID, let's say you, let's say you have a, a server with an ID of 4. And you change this to 4. then you would need to recalculate the checksum. Anytime you make any changes here, you need to recalculate the checksum. Otherwise, you'll make all these great changes and you'll add speed and angular velocity and all this stuff and, um, and the motor will not respond because if the checksum is wrong, the motor just will not recognize it as a valid request. If you go to the README on my um, on my GitHub repository, in the area where you have um, useful reference material, if you go down to the bottom, you'll see a link here for um, a website which I think is one of the best for describing how to calculate the checksum. You will want to read this and then play around with the numbers and really familiarize yourself with um, the way he's doing it because he explains it very thoroughly and um, this was extremely helpful to me. So once again you get a motor. Let's say you buy. Let's say you buy a carton with four four uh, servos. Okay, four Dynamics LX X uh, servos, and you pull a motor out. You plug it into the Raspberry Pi. You know you've already laid out your breadboard with all the cables and IC and stuff like that, and um, and you have everything connected and you're ready to change the ID. So you would just go to um, to the Dynamixel write ID that py file and um, you would just take all these lines and you know you can copy and paste or import it however you want to do it. Uh, channel 18 that's um, used uh, for high and low to tell the um, the octal buffer whether to send or receive and then uh, all the stuff pretty much remains the same this right here was very tricky this can be either TTY AMA0 or TTY S0. You want to try both. If it's not working for you, you want to try both of them. And you know everything else is right. Try TTY S0 first, and if that doesn't work, try the other one. There's extensive documentation um, about that. But that's one thing that really tripped me up when I first started doing this. You're doing a GPIO output channel, GPIO high. When you send a high, you're telling the um, the the 74 LS241 IC that you want to send. 
when you set it back down to low that means you're ready to receive okay so if you were um, if you're trying to get a, uh, a obtain a status packet and read it it would have to be done after this point and then you uh, you have some you have some um, some uh, sleep times in here and they're just so that um, that the motor doesn't trip over itself you have a serial line close you know you got serial here you got you're closing the port and then you're doing a cleanup and that's it that, that'll change the motors ID If you wanted to calculate the checksum manually, you could just pull up a calculator. And uh, and type the information in. So that's what we'll do right now. We're going to put it to um, hex. We're going to do 0, 01 plus 0, 04 plus 3 plus 3 plus 2. So it gives us D up here. Now um, we're going to say FF minus D is equal to F2. And that's exactly what we have here, F2. I like using the calculator. It's very fast, especially when you're working with a ton of instruction packets. And uh, we'll go over the, some of that stuff a little bit later.